going to be hearing from David Stark, Chief Public Affairs and Communications Officer at East Bay Association of Realtors. David will be presenting the real estate update for the Tri-Valley housing market. Welcome, David Stark. Good morning, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to join you. It's been a while, and there have been a lot of changes in the real estate markets, and I'm excited to share those changes and also to give you some, some peek into the future. And I may be calling on, um, on uh, Richard, if he's available, talk about some mortgage interest rates, because that's going to be a big part of the story. So um, I'm sorry, Harold. Um, if he's available, I may I may need to, to tap his knowledge about current interest rates. Stand by while I um, attempt to not mute myself and to share my screen. So can you see my screen? Yes. OK, very cool. So um, what I'm going to share with you is uh, is a few different perspectives on real estate. We're going to look, take a look at some aggregations of the entire East Bay, and then we're going to get real specific and focus on three local markets, and that would be Livermore, Dublin, and Pleasanton. And if you haven't seen one of my presentations before, um, just quick introduction. I work for the Bay East Association of Realtors. We are not a real estate brokerage. We're a trade association. We represent uh, more than 6,000 real estate professionals uh, throughout the Bay Area, although most of our members are doing business in the in the East Bay. The statistics that I'm going to share with you, unless I specifically call it out, are based on actual transactions that were reported in our multiple listing service. So they're not based on samples. They're not based on algorithms. They're based on actual transactions. And for the most part, the information I'm going to be sharing with you is derived from transactions involving single family detached homes. Now, my final slide will be my contact information. So if you're curious about market conditions for attached products, that would be condos and townhomes, I'm happy to share with you information about condos and townhomes. I don't include that in these presentations because the, the transactional volume involving those kinds of units is so much smaller than single family detached homes that it's not in some cases statistically valid. So I'm gonna focus solely on single family detached homes. Okay, statistics lesson and um, uh, the, the disclaimer out of the way, let's get into it. As I mentioned, and why I'm gonna uh, possibly be calling on Harold during this presentation, is that a big factor in residential real estate over the last few years have been interest rates. And in particular, the impact that one particular period, and that would be um, January to December of 2022, had on the market. And you can see that for a period starting in January 2020 up until um, about February or March of 2022, Interest rates, whether they were the fixed rate for mortgages or the 30-year jumbo rate, and the vast majority of mortgages that are issued in our Tri-Valley region are going to be in the jumbo range because of price points, um, the vast majority of those mortgages were at a historically low rate. They were in the, the 3 to 2% range for one very good reason. Um, the Fed needed something to keep the economy going during the COVID-19 crisis, so interest rates were slashed and that resonated in the mortgage world as well. So during this period that I've highlighted on this chart, um, something else happened that was unprecedented. During a 12 month period, mortgage interest rates more than doubled. And this is something that we've never experienced. And it had some fascinating implications on the market during 2022. And it's had um, some resonating effects as well. We've continued to feel the ripples of what happened during that 12 month period now more than a year later. The last information that I have um, from the end of uh, last year is that mortgage rates were in the seven and a half percent range. And I don't know if Harold wants to jump in. I've heard anecdotally that rates are now in the six, 6.5 range. Um, so bottom line is they're not in the 3% range anymore. And that's going to be a major character in this story. Well, David, I, this is Harold. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm I can hear you. Yeah, help me out here, Harold. Uh, well, David, thanks. I always wanted to tune in on this. And we have a couple of our mortgage consultants, so I better be pretty good about what I say. I, we know that rates are coming down below the 7% range. And we've even talked about doing some form of a discount because our business was very dismal last year. But I'm happy to say that the first month, just looking at data, we're starting to see some activity uh, where people, I guess, are have become benign to the rates 
the rate environment that, that, that has existed now that you've got in this chart. Yeah. Um, Harold, uh, you, you may want to keep your finger on that unmute button because I'm probably going to be calling on you later. So I appreciate you helping me out with the tag team on this presentation. So there you go. Maybe, breaking, you news. <laughs> breaking news. According to my sources, rates are now in the 6% range, which is really encouraging, but they're not in the 3% range. So we're going to talk about how that's in, uh, impacting buyers throughout the East Bay and specifically here in the Tri-Valley. So when we take a look at inventory, which has been a challenge for both home buyers and for sellers for decades, you can see that during that same period that I highlighted interest rates, there was a major change in particularly seller behavior. Um, for two years, sellers were either stuck at home because they couldn't move, or for whatever reason, they were saving up their money, they were waiting to maybe make some changes. And you can see that during the first six, seven months of uh, 2022, sellers really got the, they, they got the message. They started to see rates come up and they said, you know what, now is the time that we've got to take advantage of these rates because they continue to increase month after month after month. So what we saw throughout the East Bay is sellers bringing inventory to the market, um, taking up the uh, advantage of the opportunities to possibly work someplace else outside of the East Bay, maybe take a retirement, maybe retire outside of the East Bay. And we saw this flood of inventory, an unprecedented flood of inventory. And then as rates um, reached that, that high point, you can see exactly what happened with inventory. It was actually a double whammy because rates were reaching a maximum about the same time that residential real estate typically slows down when sellers say, well, uh, this is not the, a great time to sell because the summer is coming to an end. We're coming into maybe schools coming back in session. So it was this double whammy and we saw inventory drop throughout the East Bay. And as we got into 2023, all those people that sold their homes in 2022, well, they'd already sold their homes. So we were back to a restricted inventory situation in 2023. This is an aggregation for the entire East Bay. Uh, if we take a look at, at just the three Tri-Valley communities, you can see it was almost an identical trend. Uh, if you're wondering why is Livermore so much higher on this chart, which with a maximum of about 140 homes listed for sale in August of 2022, it's because Livermore is the biggest community out of these three. Um, but you can see the trend uh, rang true for all three of these communities, a major increase in inventory. And then as we got into 2023, the sellers, they stayed home. They just weren't there. Um, they realized some of them that the ship had already sailed on some of these interest rates. And uh, we're back to, again, an uh, inventory-restricted environment. Another way to take a look at this, because this month-to-month -month stuff might be kind of hard to compare trends, is if we took a look at average number of homes for sale per month. And you can see in the East Bay, there was a 2022 was, was absolutely exceptional. Um, we weren't where we were in 2019, where we were really expecting to see some major changes in the market. We were expecting to see, and we did experience more balance between buyers and sellers. We saw longer days on market. Then the pandemic kicked in and there were lots of different implications from the pandemic. We got into 2022, it was an exceptional year. We get into 2023 and we're right back to that inventory restricted environment. This is the aggregation for the East Bay. Take a look at the Tri-Valley. And in some cases it's, it's even worse if you are either a seller looking to stay in the Tri-Valley or if you're a buyer looking to attain home ownership in the Tri-Valley. Our inventory levels are at a five-year low, particularly in Livermore, way down from where we were in 2022. So um, combination of high interest rates, few choices, uh, it's, um, it's going to be a challenge, and it certainly was a challenge for buyers during 2023, but that's not the end of the story. If you're wondering, well, what's going to happen? Uh, where are the new homes home opportunities going to come from? You know, what is buyer behavior? What seller behavior going to be like in the next few years? Uh, here's some information from our California Association of Realtors that tracks the interest rates for outstanding mortgages in California going back to 2013. So where we were 10 years ago is that the vast majority of mortgages were in the five to six percent range, and there were very few mortgages in the three percent range. As we move into 2022, you can see that things start to shift, that um, there was a lot of refinancing going on. Um, the buyers that did purchase during that period 
the mix of mortgages changed dramatically. And as we got to at least uh, Q2 of 2023, which is the, the last month that we have information from, you can see there's a completely different mix of mortgages. We're now looking at 60% of the outstanding mortgages in California are in the three to 4% range. And those mortgages in that higher interest rate range, there are far fewer. So if you purchased or refied during this period, or if you're looking at just homeowners in general, the majority are in that very low interest rate range. So the question is, hmm, does someone really want to sell right now and potentially double their mortgage interest rate? Another way to look at this, and this is just that uh, quarter two from 2023, you can see a little bit more graphically, maybe a little bit easier to understand just how many current mortgages are in that super low interest rate range. Yet another way to look at this and, you know, what, what would, you know, inspire someone to, to move is the stability of that mortgage. If we go back again 10 years, you can see that about 65% of the outstanding mortgages were in a fixed rate product, which means that whatever interest rate they had back then, it was not going to change during the life of the loan, because that would be a decision factor in, in whether someone you know decides to uh, to sell, is if they, they're looking at their mortgage, if it's an adjustable product, they may say, hey, you know, I want to get out of this mortgage and do something else, maybe I want to move. Well, we fast forward to Q2 of 2023, and as with that interest rate mix, you can see that mix of outstanding mortgages has changed as well. We're now looking at more than slightly more than 80% of the outstanding mortgages are in a fixed rate. So 60% of outstanding mortgages are in that three to 4% range or lower, and 80% of mortgages are fixed. So those folks that are enjoying that super low interest rate, that's the rate they've got. Why would you want to move? I am now Harold's least favorite person on the planet. I apologize. Um, but this again, the story's not over. I've got a few more slides and Sherry hasn't given me the hook yet. So let's let's keep going. So in terms of what impact all this interest rate st stuff had on, on both sellers and buyers, there was clearly an immediate impact on um, buyers saying, you know what? Uh, I'm going to leverage the fact that you know money is relatively cheap, and you can see what happened for sales prices right up to the point where um, interest rates are starting to adjust. The median sales price for single-family detached homes in Alameda County, or in um, the East Bay, maxed out um, in the spring of 2022 at more than 1.4 million, and this is median, which means half the homes sold for more than 1.4 half the homes sold for less than 1.4. However, as soon as those interest rates got into the six, 7% range, you can see what happened to, um, to buying power. Buyers suddenly said, I just can't, I can't afford to make these very aggressive offers. And for the first time in about a decade, we saw month after month after month of prices coming down. We get into 2023 where rates were in the seven, 6% range and we had you know, relative price stability, some up, some down, but we ended 2023 um, at 1.94, you know, a $400,000 drop from the, the top of the market. That said, um, you know, I can say a $400,000 drop and that triggers an emotional response. When we take a look at, at year to year to year, even though prices came down from that peak by $400,000, the median for all of 2023 was still $1.1 million. So it's it's a matter of perspective. Um, sure, buyers were not able to make these super aggressive offers, but that doesn't mean that homes were suddenly at a fire sale um, condition in the East Bay. Even with this drop in, in these aggressive offers, uh, prices were still north of a million dollars. And the, the other story here is that even with interest rates twice as much as what they were in the previous years, our median sales price is right in line with 2021. It's still record setting. So a big takeaway here is even with higher interest rates, buyers still wanted to attain home ownership in the East Bay and they were willing to pay. Now they didn't have to pay as much um, as at the peak, but in terms of their monthly nut, that was probably going to be higher. And they were willing to make that monthly nut. 
This is the aggregation for the East Bay. We take a look at the Tri-Valley, and it's a slightly different experience. You can see that Pleasanton ended 2023 at 1.7. Uh, Dublin was at 1.5, and Livermore still solidly in the, the $1 million range, only coming down by $10,000, which really is a testament to the desirability of homeownership, particularly in Livermore, when you double interest rates and you only see prices come down slightly. So that's why I'm asking you to be patient as I talk about the, the impact of interest rates, because yeah, it's, it's a different environment. It's clearly having an impact on buyers, but not that much of an impact. So hopefully I'm moving back into Harold's good graces. We'll, we'll see, um, we'll, we'll find out later. So let's take a look at, at um, actual sales activity because this is a great thermometer to, to assess the health of real estate markets. And again, highlighting that period when we saw interest rates peak and you can see that there was an immediate impact on sales activity, which basically mirrored the same impact that interest rates had on inventory. Um, as soon as those rates peaked, um, sellers pulling their homes off the market, um, dropping prices, uh, with fewer homes to be sold, guess what happened? There were fewer homes sold. And that trend continued in 2023 as well. This is the aggregation for the East Band month to month. We take a look at the Tri-Valley and it's it's the same kind of trend. Um, please understand that if you're if you're looking at, you know, how many homes should we expect to be sold in 2024, we are significantly down from where we were in previous years. And the strong sales activity that we had both in 2021 and in 2022, uh, I, I may have shared this with you in previous years, Livermore is a destination. So the folks that bought during these peak sales years, they bought to live here probably long term. So while it's great to celebrate a year where we have a lot of transactions and a lot of people purchasing homes, guess what? We probably won't see those folks back in the market for 12, maybe 15 years. So we look at January 24, uh, this is the, the latest information that I have, 25 single family detached homes sold in Livermore, um, about uh, half of where we were in this time last year and definitely down from the previous two years as well. So we're, we're not starting the, the year off super strong, uh, just comparing apples to apples to apples. Also understand that January is typically one of the slowest months for real estate. That's why I'm highlighting January, January to January. So if things are gonna pick up um, in 2024, which is unlikely, uh, we're already starting um, at a much lower sales volume rate than we were in previous years. As far as um, annual sales throughout the East Bay, you can see that 21 was exceptional um, with 23,000 units sold, 22 were down to 18,000, 23 were down to 13,000. So all those people that bought those homes, they love it here, they're not going anywhere. We take a look at the East Bay and it's even more dramatic. Uh, total sales volume for single family detached during 2023, half of where we were in 2021 and down by um, about 300 units compared to 2022. So um, just to give you a snapshot of where we are right now in terms of inventory, significantly down from where we were uh, January of 23. And this is uh, something that's shared both in Dublin and in Pleasanton. As far as median sales price, and this is where it, you know real estate's a complicated story. Sure, there's fewer homes on the market. Sure, uh, interest rates are higher. But take a look at sales prices. This speaks to, you know, the, as I said earlier, people really want to be home buyers in um, in the Tri Valley and in Livermore in particular. They pointed up um, median of 1.2 for January, which is significantly higher than where we were last year. And then in terms of sales activity. Fewer choices means fewer sales. We're down by almost 40%. And um, there's no way for me to say this is great news. It just simply says that if you're uh, both a seller that is looking to stay here in Livermore or a buyer looking to uh, to achieve homeownership in Livermore, the competition is going to be fierce um, and it's going to be um, it's going to be a challenge. Not impossible, um, thanks to folks like uh, Harold and his team, but it certainly will be a challenge in 2024. Uh, that's my contact information. As I mentioned earlier, if you um, need data for other communities in the East Bay, or specifically if you've got questions about condos and townhomes, 
feel free to reach out to me. That's my cell number. You can text me at any time. I may not respond at any time, um, but feel free to reach out. You can also email me as well. Sherry, how are we doing on time? Do we have a time for questions or are we all are we all done? Okay, I'm seeing that Sherry says there's no time for questions. So um, I'm really sorry. So maybe you can, no, I, I, I make really bad jokes. <laughs> Lindsay, what's up? Hi there, Lindsay with Supervisor David Halbert's office. Thanks Hi, good to see you. David. Um, I currently am a renter and I rent an ADU in the back of a single family home in the city of Livermore. And within the state of California, there is now the opportunity that if the city of Livermore opts in, I could purchase my ADU from my landlord as a single family home slash condo situation. Could you speak a little to that and provide thoughts, uh, folks maybe expressing uh, thoughts in favor or against it? Uh, we... As a local association, we really haven't weighed in on this yet because it is a it is a new statewide policy. Um, I know that the that Mayor Marchand is is on this call as well. I certainly don't want to put him on the spot, um, but we're going to take a look and see what local jurisdictions are doing. I think that that the ability to to make those kinds of things happen is a a unique opportunity to address the housing supply issue, of which has not gone away. Um, the whole ADU concept when um, Senator Bob Wykowski proposed it a number of years ago is a fascinating concept in general. Um, it speaks to perhaps communities having to change their perspective on, you know, issues of density, issues of lifestyle, issues of perhaps compromise in terms of how do we address our housing, our housing needs. Um, that's sort of a non-answer. Um, we haven't weighed in yet because, as I said, it's new and we're waiting to see what local jurisdictions do. So, um, uh, Mayor Marchand, I'm not sure if you wanted to chime in on that. Didn't want to put you on the spot, but I know that you're here and and thought you might want to chime in as well. Sure. Any any opportunity I have. Um, but this is this is really is an interesting idea because uh, with ADUs, they didn't pay school fees. So all of a sudden, if you have somebody that buys an ADU and now has children, um, the schools aren't getting any uh, any additional revenue to provide for education. So it, it you know, this is something that it is brand new. Uh, we haven't really had an opportunity to look at it, uh, but this could have and the idea that you can split a residential lot into four units now. Uh, you can put an eight story development somewhere. So this really is impacting quality of life because they didn't have to put in parking. So all of a sudden now you got more cars on the street. So uh, it's it's. These My policies. car is already there since I'm renting. I'm really right. hoping that I can own it right. under a half a million dollars, preferably. <laughs> and if if you have uh, yeah, a husband and a child move in with you, nope. uh, that could be three cars on the street. So these are things that aren't really well thought out by the state. But the state, yeah, this is kind of a of a knee jerk reaction, and they don't uh, they don't care about long term impacts. So these are things that we have to deal with, and uh, this is this is untrammeled ground. So yeah, uh, we want people to be able to live. I'm trying to build affordable housing uh, in our community, and I've got a handful of people that have spent six million dollars trying to stop it. So this is uh, th these are our, our big issues, and we're trying to uh, we're trying to accommodate everybody. Um, I want to thank my fellow panelists, Mayor John Marchand, who along with um, Harold is. Uh is uh, making this presentation today. So th thank you, Mayor, thank you for stepping up. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I appreciate you being here. That's why I'm here. Uh, my fellow panelist, uh, Harold, what's up? Hey, David, I thought I would ask about interest rates and, and if you can look in your crystal ball and if you've got uh, a tie into Jerome Powell as to when we're gonna see rate cuts. I know there's quite a Delta, but a lot of people forecast three, some forecast six, some creative budgets that are out of the water now. What does your organization think about rate relief of some kind? I know it's higher for longer, but anything would help. Um, if, if my crystal ball was that powerful, this this background would be very different. It would either be at Tuscany or Maui. Just just saying, um, Harold, <laughs> I, I don't I don't mean to be cute um, about that. We don't know. I mean, there's there's a lot of factors. It's it's an election year. Um, that's clearly going to influence federal policy related to to any kind of economic issues. Um, still dealing with inflation issues, so there's there's we're still in unprecedented times coming out of the pandemic. 
I will share this with you though, um, that it is in many respects far, if, if you're, if one of the questions here is, is around, clearly there's a, a connection between interest rates and sellers deciding to sell and also buyer behavior as well. Here's something to think about. It is far easier for interest rates to change than for land use policies and the general public attitude toward residential development to change. So if we're looking at what are the factors that might change the the you know the ability of buyers and sellers to do their thing or what what thumbs on the scale are really going to move things particularly here in the Tri Valley I think your questions about interest rates um are I would pay more attention to that than land use issues and things like that because there's some real big hurdles that would have to change in order for a whole bunch of units to come on the market to change the market in that sense so um I apologize for the non-answer but I, I think it's you're asking the right questions because if you want to understand the future of residential real estate, take a look at interest rates. Because if you look at all the other variables over the last few years, that's been the single variable that's really changed things for both buyers and sellers. Harold, are we cool now? I mean, because I know that like a few minutes ago, I probably upset you. So, okay. Okay. Um. Anybody else? Sherry, I'm sensing that I've exhausted everyone's capacity to ask ask questions. So should I call on people? I I, I don't know. David, I think I think with your last mark was kind of like a mic drop, honestly. Okay. <laughs> she just like left it and then you know, walked away. <laughs> David Stark. Can I ask you a question? I'm sorry. Yes, I'm like, since we have time, I'll ask a question. So Hi Lisa. Hi, hi Laura. Hi, Spectrum Community Services, we deal with a lot of people who are older adults. They've been aging in their homes, right? Sometimes they're living in a three bedroom, two bath home by themselves and really a smaller unit, something for them to downsize into might be, you know, best for them. They might be ready to do that, but there, a lot of them are scared that there isn't any place for them to go to stay in the community that they helped build. You know, what what are you seeing? Are you seeing more options in the mix for folks to be able to downsize and, and let that fam you know, a young family take over that that house? Um so you're and I just I just have to be very direct about this. We are we don't pay attention to who the buyers may be. OK, um, the the Fair Housing Act of 1968 makes it very clear to real estate professionals and everyone that whoever wants to buy a home, they can buy a home regardless of their their family configuration or, or anything like that. So I just want to be very, very clear about that, um, that that the Bay East Association of Realtors supports housing opportunities for everybody. Um, I think, though, that your, your question about opportunities for, for folks, you know, where do they go next? One of the challenges about residential real estate in the Tri-Valley, and, and you alluded to it earlier, these, these um, residents that may have been here for a while that, that built this community, well, guess what they did? They built a great community, um, Livermore in particular, to the extent that you know when someone comes to Livermore, and if you look at the what, I, what I've described in the past as the watershed moments in the arc of home ownership, whether that's that's family creation or a job change or education needs or retirement needs, all those watershed moments when they when they happen to someone who lives in the Tri Valley, it doesn't necessitate them having to leave the Tri Valley. We have the employment opportunities, we have the education opportunities, thanks to, to groups like you. We have the services available for folks to age in place within the Tri Valley. So congratulations on creating a great place to live for your entire life. And hey, thanks for, you know, that you were, we're kind of screwing things up for people because no one wants to leave. And I, I'm not trying to be, to be overly cute about this, but it's a reality. Um, so the bottom line is the creation of more opportunities to, uh, and, and more opportunities that might be appropriate for specific homeowners needs to be a high priority. Um, and I, I, again, I've got to be careful about saying, well, this kind of unit is appropriate for this kind of person, because guess what? The Fair Housing Act says 
you know, hey, if someone wants to to bump around in their 2,000 square foot home um, by themselves, they have the right to do that. But as as community leaders and stakeholders and decision makers and influencers, the fact that that there is, as you mentioned earlier, just pure demographics, whether it's the the greatest generation or the baby boomers, creating opportunities for them to experience something that doesn't have the burdens of that 2,000 square foot home with the yard and all that stuff may be very, very attractive. But that's a tough nut to crack because we're talking about um, a denser product, maybe something that's not familiar to folks that have lived in this area for a long time. So to address your question directly, um, you know, what, what are we seeing? We're seeing resistance to that kind of kind of stuff. Um, and unless and until some attitudes change, there's still going to be some challenges for folks that are looking for a different homeownership experience. Um, my fellow panelist, um, uh, Mayor Marchand, do you want to jump in on this one? Well, you said it right there, David. Um, what people are looking, a lot of the, the older folks are looking for a smaller place. They don't want to work in the yard anymore. Uh, and they're looking for a small place, which means higher density. Where do we get the greatest pushback and the greatest opposition when you start talking about a higher density product? Uh, so we've got people that want this uh, and we've got the the folks that are fighting against it. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a real difficult place to, uh, to, to land. Um, do we have another softball question for either <laughs> me or the mayor or Harold? I think, I think we're good. David Stark uh, with East Bay Association of Realtors. All right. So with that, uh, thank, you thank you. Thank you so thank much, you, David, David, for being here. And thanks, everybody, for joining the meeting today. And our next meeting will be Wednesday, March 6th. So have a great rest of February, everybody. See you next month. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all.